Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. And today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about Penn and Teller Fool Us. This is gonna be the first video in a series of videos all about some of my favorite acts on Penn and Teller Fool Us. I get questions on this channel all the time uh, asking me to tell people who my favorite Penn and Teller acts are. I love Penn and Teller Fool Us. There are some remarkable acts I cannot do uh, one list on this because there's been so many great acts on Penn and Teller Fool Us. Um, this is the first of those videos, but there will be others. Um, but yeah, I don't need to explain to you what Penn and Teller Fool Us is. I don't need to explain to you uh, how iconic the television show is. Um, for the one person that's been living under a rock, the whole idea is that you go on the TV show to try and fool Penn and Teller, two icons of the magic community. Um, the five acts I'm going to uh, I'm going to suggest that you watch. I really want you to go and check them out if you haven't seen them because they are incredible. So without further ado, let's go. In position number five, we have John Archer, who was on the original pilot episode of Penn and Teller Fool Us, and John Archer is incredible. I'm a big, huge, massive John Archer fan. I always have been. And uh, he went out and performed an incredibly clean version of Bank Night, which fooled absolutely everybody, including Penn and Teller. And uh, obviously this then got released uh, afterwards as Blank Night uh, through Vanishing Ink. And it's become a staple in a lot of uh, stage magicians repertoires and one of the reasons is it is so unbelievably clean it really is it looks like there's no way you could cheat and yet apparently you do it fooled Penn and Teller I think it fooled pretty much every other magician as well but one of the reasons it was so good in my opinion isn't just the fact that it was a great trick and it was a fooling trick it's also the fact the presentation was so strong. And this is something you expect from John Archer. When you see John Archer perform, you expect an incredible presentation because the guy is incredible. I mean, truly incredible. He is one of the greats of, uh, of magic. And, you know, there's nobody who lights up a stage like John Archer. And, you know, when he bought out Blank Knight, through Vanishing Ink. I think a lot of people bought that and just used his presentation, you know, exactly the same because it was a hilarious presentation. It really was. And it was very iconic, John Archer. And I think for me, those are the best acts that go on Penn and Teller. It's the ones that are really funny or really engaging or have a great presentation and a great script while still being able to fool Penn and Teller. It's very easy to go on and, and fool them with a boring uh, mathematical trick that nobody can follow. Um, and it's, you know, but, but to go and do that and light the room up as well, well, that takes real skill. And that's what John Archer did. And he set the bar. He really set the bar very early on in this TV show. Um, yeah, so I would say Penn and Teller, the first act, position number five, is John Archer. Okay, so in fourth place, I'm going to put Michael Kent. Now, Michael Kent came out and did a trick that I don't think it stood a chance of fooling Penn and Teller. I don't think it stood a chance of fooling Penn and Teller at any point. But I have never seen anybody perform this routine as well as Michael Kent. And I've seen a lot of people perform it. Hell, I perform this. I've performed this in my show for years and I don't perform it as well as Michael Kent. I'm talking, of course, about the, uh, the multiplying bottles and Michael Kent came out and literally lit up the room. I'm telling you right now, Tommy Cooper would be proud. He went out there, he did the multiplying bottles. He did it so, he brought it bang up to date. It was modern, it was relevant. I absolutely love the whole, I sound like a bomber change. Um, I, I, I understand there was another part to that, uh, to that line, which was cut from the program uh, that, that, that followed up with the Trump line as well. But, you know, the whole thing was just brilliant. His handling 
of the multiplying bottles is just second to none. And I've seen a lot of people perform the multiplying bottles and it becomes a little bit confusing, like you just haven't got a clue what's going on the entire way through and it becomes less of a magic trick and more of a puzzle. That wasn't the case with this. The entire way through, I was literally hanging on the edge of my seat. And then Penn said that he's never seen anyone handle those props as well as Michael Kent. And I completely agree. I thought Michael Kent was awesome. Okay, so in position number three, we have Leah Kyle. Uh, Leah Kyle, who has since shot to fame on various different TV shows, including doing really, really well on BGT, uh, or AGT, sorry. Uh, Leah Kyle just honestly blew me, blew me away. Best quick change act I have ever seen. Uh, I wasn't expecting that much, to be honest. When they announced her, I was like, okay, here we go. And very quickly, I was just completely floored. Uh, this is something that I, I, it was just so out there. And now I've got very limited experience when it comes to quick change. Uh, we used to do a quick change segment in my illusion show a few years ago, uh, but that was a very basic version. Uh, I don't really have much experience of quick change, but I know what I've seen. I've seen a lot of quick change acts. And one thing that I've always seen every single quick change act, there's always a guy and a girl. They always start off looking like they're quite plump because of the amount of clothes they wear and they slowly get thinner and thinner and thinner. And they all do the same thing, don't they? They all do the glitter thing and they all do, there's certain bits that they always do. It's like watching a close-up magician uh, doing ambitious card and omni deck. You know, you see a close-up magician walk up to a group of people and pull out a deck of cards. You pretty much know what's gonna happen ahead of time, right? Doesn't mean it's bad, it just means you've seen it a whole bunch. Leah Kyle came out on that stage and just completely floored me for a few different reasons. First of all, th there was only her on stage, which made it a lot more raw. It made it a lot more interesting. The focus was well and truly on her. But as well as, as, well as that, the changes were so good. I mean, a lot of the changes took place without any cover whatsoever. Dresses were flying across the room. And as they hit her body, it was changing her clothes. You know, they had, she had what looked like delights that were changing the colours of her dress without any cover. Uh, the whole thing was just so good. And normally with a lot of quick change acts, there's a lot of dancing around, a lot of fannying around in between changes. With Leah Kyle, it felt like there was just one continuous motion. There was no, it wasn't disjointed like a lot of the quick change acts that I've ever seen. And it made me want to see so much more of this girl. Leah Kyle is absolutely brilliant. And if you haven't seen her on Penn and Teller Foolers, you should really go and see her because she is very, very good. Okay, so in second place, we have Noel Corter. Now, Noel Corter uh, took place in the last season in Penn and Teller. And uh, he, he was doing it virtually. And it was such a funny funny, funny presentation. Um, I think that this harkens back to what I said with John Archer, which is if you're going to go on Penn and Teller, yeah, great, try and fool them for sure. But I think it's more important to uh, entertain them, entertain them and everybody else in that audience. And you know what? That's what Noel did. He entertained them and then some. And I think that typifies Noel, to be honest, as a performer, which is he's a great magician. He's a great thinker of magic but he will fool the absolute living pants off you and he will do it with a smile on his face and he is very, very entertaining. And, and this just was a perfect showcase of Noel's style of magic. Um, it was very conversational, but at the same time, it was very completely out there. It was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to the, the Penn and Teller in the past, you know, and the, the what am I trying to say? The, uh, the lengths to which he went in order to get all of this in place and the lengths he went to to you know have a video of young Penn and Teller and then old Noel and all of this stuff it was just and and you know throwing Piff the Magic Dragon in there as well the whole thing was just so slick so well done to be honest at times I forgot there was even a card trick going on you know the whole presentation the hook for the whole thing was great and it almost takes you off guard 
And then Noel goes and absolutely kicks you in the teeth with a card trick which just shouldn't be possible in any way, shape or form. It just shouldn't be possible. And it, and it was, and you see it there and you watch it and you go, oh my gosh, that's just happened and I have no idea how it's happened. Um, he framed that whole thing beautifully. Um, but the thing that I will always remember about it is the script and the presentation because both the script and the presentation were fantastic. Okay, and in first place, we have Costa Kimlet. I mean, what can I say? If you haven't seen Costa's performance on Penn and Teller Foolers, go and watch it and then tell me you weren't fooled. Tell me you didn't feel like a brand new beginner in magic that's watching it for the first time and wondering what the hell went on. I mean, we all know that Costa is an incredible magician, right? We know that. We know that. We know he's an incredible magician. He's an incredible cardician. He's an incredible sleight of hand artist. But none of that explains what the hell went on in that card trick. And you know what I really liked about the performance? Uh, you could see Penn getting more and more and more pissed off because he knew where this trick was going. I think everybody who was watching that has any experience with magic knew where he was going. He knew, we all knew what the finale was. And we were waiting for that moment where we get to see the move. We get to see the moment that that is all made to be possible. And nobody ever saw the move. There was no move to be seen. And, and, and you know, he did the reveal and it was just beautiful. And, you know, Penn was really pissed off that he fooled him. And, uh, and, and, and I was as well because I just, I remember watching that for the first time and just not having a clue. It was a perfect example of a, of a magician who's at the top of their game doing what they do best. And that is when Penn and Teller Foolers is such a great advocate to magicians and magic in general. Because laymen who watch this, they are seeing some of the best magic in the world. Because you can't get on Penn and Teller unless you are very good at magic. So yeah, I mean, that's that's all I got to say about that. It was exceptional. And if you haven't seen it, go and watch Costa Kimlet on Penn and Teller for us, because you'll love it. So there you go, guys. That is five Penn and Teller acts, five magicians that have been on Penn and Teller for us that stood out for me, that made me think, wow, that was something special. Uh, I'm going to do more of these videos in the future, but want you to do me a favor. Let me know down below what you thought of this video. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree with my choices? Would you have put somebody else into this list? Do you think there's somebody else that I should go on my next list? I would love to know what you think. So let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will be back again tomorrow with another three videos. One at two, one at six, one at nine. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great night. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.